In this section, we're going to be looking at box plots and how we represent them with a five number summary. So a box plot is a graph of data that contains the following values that are designated as lines along the example we can see below. So as we go through each of these points, we're going to connect them down with the example. So the minimum score is the lowest added value in the set. Here we can see in this representation that five would be the minimum score in this data set. Now the second quartile is P50, remember we just talked about that, so that's the same thing as your 50th percentile, and it's the median. In this case, it's 104. And then your maximum value is the highest data value, which in this data set is 300. Now the first quartile is equivalent to P25, so it separates the lowest 25% from the highest 75% of the scores. And in this example we see it's 47. And the last one we have here is the third quartile, which is P75, and it separates the lowest 75 from the highest 25%. In this example, its value is 121. So, when we've gone through this, you should be able to look at a box plot similar to the one here and be able to identify each of the five data values, uh, numbers that go into the summary and also be able to see how they connect with the lowest value, the maximum value, and then uh, the three quartiles that are equivalent to also three of the percentiles. So, if we're going to take this and write this out as the five number summary, it's really simply going to go in order from minimum score all to the first quartile, to the second quartile, to the third quartile, and then the maximum highest score. So this would be what you would be entering in for your homeworks or the exam. All right, let's do a practice problem. So we're going to look at the data of age when winning an Oscar for each gender, and then the data is available in your text, and we're going to construct a box plot and write out the five number summary. So again, we're doing a problem very similar to what you'd be having um, for your homeworks and your exams. All right, so opening your stats crunch, keep in mind this time we're going to use data set from your textbook. So you need to go through the options to open up a data set. All right. Once you select that option, you need to go through and you will find the data set uh, with the title of age for winning an Oscar for uh, and gender. So when you have that, you should open it up. You should be able to have your data set available and see that. Then you should go ahead and select graph and select box plot. Now holding down your shift key, you click on both actresses and actors. That moves them both over into the selected column on the right hand side. You want to select the option to draw the boxes horizontally. Select the option to show the median. That just gives you a nice visual. And then hit compute. When you've done that, you should get something that comes out looking pretty much like this. So here we see the visual representation of our comparisons of the two dot box plots. Now, in order to get the numbers that we'd map onto these, we're going to use the stash card summary. Um, to compute our values. So let's go through and do that. And indeed, we should, here's the values that we get. And we all remember we already covered this before. So we're plugging these values in. For our answer, we can see there's our minimum score, which is 29. We can also see it provides the maximum score, which is 76. We can see it's marked our median score. Remember, the median is the same thing as P50, or second quartile. So that's 42. And then you can see on the end, Q1 and Q3. So applying all of these in, we get for the five number summary for actors, 29, 38, 42, 49, and 76. Now, use the same process and go through and get the values for, the, for actresses. Pause the video while you do that, and then when you have your answers, let's proceed to the next one together and check it. All right, you should have gotten 21, 29, 33, 40, and 80. Now, let's visually compare these data sets. What can we conclude about gender differences in the age of winning an Oscar? So looking at these two data sets, what can we conclude? What can we, information can we draw from this visual representation? Well, we can see that the actresses have a broader range. So we can see when we're looking at that, that they go from much younger um, to a little bit older than actors when winning the Oscar. Um, we can also see that overall actresses are younger when winning an Oscar. So we can see that the space included by the first quartile and the third quartile is a little bit further to the left, thus younger than the one for actors.
All right, now we need to also talk about identifying if data points are an outlier. Okay, so when we're looking at outliers and we're looking at them on a box plot, a data point is an outlier if it is above Q3, so that's the third quartile, by not greater than one times the interquartile range. Okay, and we get the interquartile range by taking Q3 minus Q1. So again, looking back at the stat summary information, you would take Q3, subtract Q1 from it. That gives you interquartile range. So let's take a look at doing this process. So you're going to follow the same steps that you did before for the box plot, except you're going to select on the option also to use fences to identify outliers. So once you've done that, you're going to hit on compute, and you're going to figure that looks something like this. Now let's take a look and see what we can identify out from this particular box, this set of box plots. So what can we learn about the outliers from this particular graph? Well, we can see that actors have only one outlier, okay? Whereas the actresses have five outliers. So we've got a great deal more outliers for actresses than for actors. All right, now applying the data set for actresses, we can go through and look at. So if we're looking at data values that are above the Q3, the third quartile, by 1.5, then we're going to get, uh, and keep in mind, so we're looking at our quartile, or we're looking at our interquartile, that's going to be 40 minus 29, because then we're taking our quartile 3 of 40 for this data set. We're subtracting 29, which is our quartile 1 for this data set. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by 150. Okay, so when we, we go across and we get this, we're going to get an answer, a total answer of 56.5. Okay, so again, working through that step by step, we're going to have our third quartile, which is 40, okay? And then we're going to add 16.5. And we calculate 16.5 by taking 1.5 and multiplying it by the uh, interquartile range. So the data values that are above 56.5 for this data set is 60, 61. We actually have two scores of 61, 63, 74, and 80. So when we go and look at those, we can see those identified, for example, in this box plot below. So there's the values of 60. Notice um, for 61, we have only one data point. It doesn't stack it. So that is one of the things when you're looking at the box plot from an outlier, it will only show a single value for the outlier, even if you have several data points that all have that same value. Now, the last thing to think about when we're looking at reading box plots is we looked at constructing them. Let's also talk about how we would read them. So this is typical of information we'll be looking at, for example, in consumer reports, uh, trying to go through and look at, make assessments about uh, purchasing a vehicle. So here, uh, when we're looking at, we wanna know which vehicle has the least variation between quartile one and quartile three. So which one of these would have the least amount of variation? Take a moment and look at it and think about your answer for that. In fact, we're going to find that the, uh, the sports vehicles, when we're looking at the space between quartile 1 and quartile 3, is the smallest, so that is the least amount of variation. Which one has the largest amount of variation between quartile 1 and quartile 3? And we can see if we're looking at this, this is in fact going to be the type of hybrids. So when we're looking at hybrids, they got a great deal of variation. So if we were looking at this and making assessments, let's say we're trying to decide uh, what kind of vehicle we're going to get, and whether or not the particular type matters a whole lot. So we can see, for example, if we were looking at the different types of vehicles, a uh, sports vehicle, there's a great deal of difference between a Dodge and a Toyota. Um, but if we we're looking at a sedan, we can see that there's not that much difference between the Volkswagens, Hondas, and the Toyotas. So these would be the types of things that we would look at to be able to make an assessment when we're making a purchase and decide which one of these vehicles has the least amount of variation, and within them, which one am I going to be most interested in when I'm looking at um, my mileage? So this is an example of how you read a box plot, wrapping up our section looking at how to construct a box plot. So this concludes our sections on measures of relative standing.